Good evening, family. It is Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022. Right around f a little bit after 5, about 10 after 5 p.m. here on the Eastern Standard Time. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Pray you're all feeling blessed. Uh, going live this evening because um, we are launching a new initiative through Devoted Life. Um, we are starting something. There is a fly buzzing around. God bless it. We are starting an initiative called Summer of the Watchmen. Um, so at the end of last year, I was praying about the direction for the ministry this year. Um, and as with everything, life happens, right? So a lot of what we have started, um, some of it is continuing. Some of it we were told to table and close that chapter and um other things are yet to come and summer of the watchman has been one of those things that is yet to come and tonight it launches so for the entire season of summer the next 14 weeks we are going to be taking a look at how to renew our relationships with the lord by being in relationship and seeking him together um, in this virtual space. So um, a little bit about Devoted Life. We are a new ministry um, that is focused on helping people grow in their relationships with the Lord and with one another by engaging in the practicalities of peace. So those five things are prayer, equipping, activation, compassion, and elevation. When you take those five things, it makes the acronym PEACE. Um, something that I have experienced in my own life, something that I have heard from numerous other people is just this feeling of being tired, this weariness that has come over the body of Christ. And as much as it pains me to say, there have been moments in my own walk with the Lord and there have been moments that I've heard from other people where that weariness has led to a, um, a quiet season, um, a lack of pursuing the Lord and his will for our lives with as much fervor as we should be holding. With the way things are going in the world, we cannot afford to have that happen. The body of Christ cannot afford to have that happen. The leaders that he is putting into place right now cannot afford to have that happen and it, you know i believe that the world in general cannot afford to have that happen i believe that god still has a plan that needs to be played out for the way things are going in the world and i believe that the leaders of the body the remnant have a very key and integral role in bringing his kingdom helping to bring his kingdom forth and in, in advancing his kingdom, right? When we, when we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're asking the Lord to invite us and show us the wisdom in how to partner with him in bringing about his kingdom and his will here while we await his coming. So we are going to be taking a dive into First and Second Thessalonians, over the course of the next 14 weeks. Um, for those of you who follow the Hebrew calendar, that puts us right around the end of the year 5782. Um, and so I feel like it's significant that we are um, beginning this journey now and journeying over the course of time that will take us up to uh, the Feast of Trumpets, the, the other um, fall-time feasts, also known as Rosh Hashanah, and Yom Kippur, um, and the Feast of Tabernacles, we will have that period of time beginning right as um, the next 14 weeks, right as Summer of the Watchmen is coming to a close. So the point of this time together is to do some heart work with the Lord. Let's just open ourselves up before him. He knows it all anyway, so let's be vulnerable with him and with ourselves so that we can be 
placing ourselves before him in a heart posture and in a physical posture, a mental posture, an emotional posture that is saying, Lord, we are 100% in on what you're doing and how you would have us partner with that. So I'd like to start this journey by looking at how the Apostle Paul greeted the church in Thessalonica in each of his letters. In the first verse or two of both 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians, this is the Tree of Life version that I'm reading from. He says, grace to you and shalom. In 2 Thessalonians, grace to you and shalom from God our Father and the Lord Yeshua the Messiah. So why are we starting here? I, I, I would like us to start here so that we can enter into the presence of the Lord from this foundational place, right? You might be able to hear the music I have playing in the background. It's, it's a song by William Augusto called Covenant With Him. We are in a covenantal relationship. Those of us who have said yes to the Lord uh, and recognizing him as our Lord and Savior, recognizing him as the King of Kings and the Messiah of the world, and, and saying, yes, I want to be a part of what you're doing. I want to submit to your authority. I want you to save me from myself and from the sin that I'm steeped in and from the brokenness that I've come from. Grace and shalom is part of that foundation. The grace that the Lord offers is a matchless gift. And it's something that we need on a daily basis. <laughs> I, there are times when I go minute to minute and say, Lord, just give me your grace. I need your grace right now. Whether it's a frustration that I'm experiencing through work or family or circumstance, regardless of what it is, he's bigger than all of it. And because I've said yes to him, I don't have to be perfect. His grace is a gift that is afforded to all people that I've said yes to. And so rediscovering what that means, what does it mean to rest in his grace and be filled with his peace, with his shalom? How do we get back to that place? How do we take the thoughts that are causing us to be weary captive, submit them to him, and get back to that foundational place of abiding in his presence, practicing his presence as we go through the daily tasks that we have before us, and not allowing ourselves to feel overwhelmed or frustrated. Um, and not that that's bad necessarily, but in the moments when those things crop up, when we feel those things beginning to bubble up, taking a pause, taking a deep breath, and recognizing that we can submit those things to him and rest under the umbrella of his grace, forgiveness, and be filled with his peace through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. So as, as we sit in this topic for the next week, the grace and shalom and those gifts from the Lord and what it means in our lives. Let's take some time and we'll have some guided content that's posted over the course of the week. But let's really take some time to sit with the Lord and say, show me your glory. Show me where you are pouring your grace out in my life. Help me to be aware. Open our spiritual eyes. Open our spiritual ears. And help us to be aware, Father, of how you are granting your grace to us. Connect us in deeper ways with your Holy Spirit that we might understand in fresh and new ways what that connection means in our relationship with you and how it's meant to spill over in our connections 
with those around us, those areas where we have influence, where we practice roles of leadership, um, and, and really understanding the ways in which the Lord is bringing us into these things in this season. So as we close our time this evening, I pray blessing over each of you who were able to tune in, who are catching this on the replay. And uh, I ask the Lord to bless each of us with a fresh understanding so that we can accept his grace, understand that that is the place that we rest in. It's not by our own efforts. As it says in Zechariah, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, that we are called to operate from a place of partnering with him and his grace showering over us, filling us, and then overflowing to influence our spheres and those around us. So blessings on each of you. I hope you can engage with us over the course of this next 14 weeks. Invite others to join in. Anyone who has a heart for growing deeper and getting back to that place of experiencing our first love, Jesus. Um, I just invite you to come along with us and invite those um, whom you're connected to to take this journey with us. So peace and blessings.